For another of our occasional podcasts here at Film Yap, I'm of course am joined by uh, fellow yappers Alec Toombs and Bob Bloom. Good to have you, gentlemen. Thank Thanks, you. Chris. So, with uh, the presumably final Indiana Jones movie, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, coming out this Friday as we record this, uh, we thought we'd take a little moment and just talk about you know the cultural cinematic importance of the franchise of the character the actor the movies um just everything um so kind of we'll just talk about that uh, we're not going to focus too much on the new movie just because um most people listening to this will have not seen it as yet bob and i have seen it we actually saw it a couple weeks ago um alec has not yet uh and of course we do not want to be spoilery although i guess we should talk about it just to the extent of Early reviews I'm seeing out, I'm coming out, are not terribly kind. Uh, again, Bob, without spoiling anything, just kind of give me a reaction. What's your take on the movie? Okay, without spoiling anything, my reaction is that the movie is built, hopefully, its hope on the goodwill and nostalgia of people who have seen the first four movies. And they're their love of Harrison Ford or their affection for Harrison Ford and their love of the her heroic character of Indiana Jones. Yeah. So it sounds basically like maybe, that's it. So it sounds like maybe like sort of a fan servicing, a lot of nostalgia. If you've liked the others, come on back for another go round. Right. Yeah. I think I'm liking it more than most other critics so far. Um, I would say I think it's the weakest of the five movies, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, I should put in, uh, and maybe this could be the, the the jumping point to the next part of our discussion, is my uh, favorites of the series of the franchise are not most others people's. Um, I actually would put uh, 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 Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom as by far my favorite. Um, I actually like uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull more than most people. I did a whole reeling backward column defending it. Um, I actually would put that above um, uh, Last Crusade. So my ranking of, of the films would be Temple of Doom, Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Last Crusade, and then uh, Dial of Destiny as the last one. Um, with, again, the proviso. I like and on some level love all of the films, so I'm not knocking them. Uh, but Alec, why don't I toss it to you? Uh, what is your take on, you know, not just your ranking of the films, but also maybe, you know, where you think they they sit as a cultural and cinematic phenomenon? Um, not having seen the newest one, I would rank them uh, one, three, uh, two, four. Probably. Uh, I like all of them. Um, I think Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is an underrated movie. It does have its issues. But uh, yeah, uh, the Indiana Jones franchise is something I, I grew up with. There was a television program that was on TV when I was a kid. Young Indiana Jones Chronicles uh, showed them as a young boy and as a young man. Um, I was a big fan of that show. A lot of great uh, talents got their start on that show. Frank Darabont wrote for the show. And I think directed some episodes. Um, one of the earliest memories I have of a movie is from Raiders of the Lost Ark with all the Nazis' faces melting. And that's always stuck with me. Uh, Spielberg is one of my favorite filmmakers. So, yeah, I think this, the, the franchise has made uh, quite the connection with me and with uh, audiences as a whole. Yeah. Bob, I'll toss it to you in just a sec. I will say this. It, it, it's notable. Is it's the one franchise that Harrison Ford has been involved in where he has not seemed like in a hurry to kill off the character or otherwise be done with it. Uh, of course, uh, and again, we're not spoiling anything about what happens in Dial of Destiny, but, um, you know, uh, killed off Han Solo, killed off his character Deckard in uh, the Blade Runner movies, uh, as, you know, at various cons and, you know, interactions with fans joked about wanting to kill off all of his iconic characters. And uh, uh, Dr. Henry Jones Jr., 
has been the one character that he's repeatedly brought up that I love this character. I will keep playing him until uh, I die or he dies. Um, so that's an interesting part of the phenomenon is that Harrison Ford has been enthusiastic about coming back to this character, even though it's been, you know, huge time slips. So of course, we had the first film in 81 or 82. 81. 81 83 years later, 84. Uh, I believe 89 for Last Crusade. And then this big, you know, to 2009. Um, 2008, I believe. 2008, because there's a 19 year gap between movies and then now 14 year gap with this movie. So, Bob, um, where where are you? You can go and give your rankings of the films if you'd like, but then also talk about where you think these things fit in the cinematic uh, universe. Now okay. Go ahead, Bob. okay. Raiders of the Lost Ark is my favorite. Uh, Last Crusade is second. Uh, it's a toss up on number three between Temple of Doom and uh, Dial of Destiny, but I'm going to go with Temple of Doom. Uh, Dial of Destiny is four, and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is last, simply because of the atomic bomb and Indy escaping in a refrigerator. It's a, to me, that's a jump the shark moment. Yeah, it's funny. I'm, I mean, I won't get into a whole beef about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but my take on that uh, has always been like that. You know, like the nuke the fridge moment is the one that people, you know, just the 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 leap that people couldn't make. Which, you know, to me, the whole idea of it was supposed to be humorous and over the top and ridiculous, you know, and it's like the people who can't accept that uh, were okay with, you know, uh, you know, the, the Ark of the Covenant killing Nazis. Uh, they were okay with, you know, a shaman reaching to a guy's chest, pulling out his beating heart, and somehow they, he still lives, and all the other, you know, fantastic leaps of fantasy that are in these movies. Whatever. Uh, yeah, but, but you know, yours is the pro- like Nazis is an extra point for me on any movie. Yeah, but yours is the prevalent opinion, so uh, I'm fine with that. Um, something I'm interested in, you know, very much is the the timeline of the Indiana Jones movies, which unlike you know other fantasy, fantasy science fiction things, you know, they tend to be very vague about you know the passage of time and you know who this that you know and all the sewing up all the, the the threads of logic one thing i've loved about the indiana jones <laughs> franchise the movies about is they're very specific about when things take place when things happen uh where dr jones is in his life um alec i love that you brought up the the young indiana jones chronicle the tv show which probably a lot of people don't really remember um but was you know really i think a, a important part of the franchise um you know uh uh Introducing him, you know, as a child and then kind of like as a teenager and young man. Um, also, you know, very firmly established, you know, like like Dr. Jones's birth year. He was born in 1899. Easy to remember is my grandfather was also born that year. And the show kind of had like a little bit of a Zelig uh, appeal to it. And it was like him meeting lots of favorite people, Teddy Roosevelt and so forth and having adventures with them. But, you know, this very thing, like we know, like we, we always know how old Dr. Jones is. It's none of this, like, like how old is Han Solo, you know, in the last movie when he's killed? Uh, just an idea. But like this, all these movies, we know what year they're taking place. So in the first two movies, um, he's in his late 30s, um, uh, a little bit older in Last Crusade. Uh, uh, King of the Crystal Skull, he's in his late 50s. And, you know, uh, and, and in this movie, Dial of Destiny, he's about 70, 71 years old. And I, I, for me, as who, someone who's been accused correctly of being too much of a literalist when I, as, a, as I approach movies, I like having that all established there. We know where everything is, where everything fits. And I think the the young Indiana Jones Chronicles kind of helped establish that. Alex, thoughts? Um, yeah, I was just a, a big fan of the show as a kid. I was thinking of this just now. Um, we were talking about the cultural impact of the Indiana Jones franchise. I think uh, Temple of Doom is the reason we have the PG-13 rating, if I'm not mistaken. Prior to that, I mean, that movie definitely should have been R-rated. You're seeing like people get their, their heart ripped out and the monkey brains and all this stuff. It's a pretty hardcore movie made for children, which they don't really do much anymore. I was a fan of. We wouldn't have a PG-13 without Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yeah. 
Um, it is interesting though that like getting back to what Bob said about the serials, you know, it is it is very much harkening back to something old, but also do, doing something new. And I think you know, as Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, you know, their perspectives changed as they got older. Um, you know, what they wanted out of the, the Indiana Jones series, I think, also changed. You know, the first few movies, you know, very much was sort of recreating nostalgia for them, you know, like those 1930s serials that they grew up on as kids, the 30s and 40s. You know, I think one of the big disconnects with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was it was very much, you know, like, like let's do a science fiction Indiana Jones movie. Um, and I think, Bob, you're also right, you know, in, in that this one is, you know, they're now older, I think, in their 70s. Um, right. and they're, and they're, I think they're very much craving a sense of nostalgia and closure um, in their own lives and their own filmmakers. We should mention, of course, this is the will stand as the one Steven Spielberg movie that was not directed by uh, uh, Indiana Jones movie that was not directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, I'm, was it James Mangold is the director of yeah, this? James yeah. Mangold. Mangold. Yeah. Thank you. And that's an interesting, you know, decision. Um, I so asked I, Bob this during our, our, our recess. Uh, did the movie, the new one, feel more to you like a Spielberg movie or like a Mangold movie? I think it was a combination of both. There were some Spielberg. Ele the first part felt like Spielberg. The rest of it did not. The only thing that felt Spielbergian about it is John Williams' score. That yeah. kept harking back to Spielberg. Yeah, and I believe we do have this. This is going to be John Williams's last film score. He said so himself. Is that correct? I didn't read that any place. If it is, I'm sorry to hear it. I love his music. Yeah, I mean, interesting. You know how those the, the filmmaker, composer, and this franchise have gone along, and that music is just so iconic. I remember there was something talking about like he had two kind of basic ideas for the the score, and you know Spielberg said do both of them. Because uh, I like both of them. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, maybe, where do you think um, the Indiana Jones franchise stands compared to other big franchises in film? Like, um, you know, like the, the the Lord of the Rings movies, the Star Wars movies, the Harry Potter movies. Um, I'm not sure if you can call the MCO a franchise, because that's sort of like, you know, if it is, it's a very sprawling franchise, but... Like where, Bob, where do you think it stands in terms of like its importance, its quality? Culturally, I think it's, it ranks at the near the very top, if not at the top for many reasons. Number one, uh, like I said, it, it created a interest in people, for people who had never seen serials of the 30s and 40s you know, into maybe checking them out. Uh, I know that uh, after the movie came out, there were some uh, TV stations uh, that started showing serials uh, once in a while. I mean, Turner Classic Movies, that, which is God knows what's going to be happening to them, uh, you know, shows a serial on sa a serial chapter on Saturday morning, even though they're showing crappy serials. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, and plus it, it's the longevity of it. I mean, when you think about it, the Lord of the Rings movies took place, what, over a 10 year period? You mean the, 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 within the story, how long? It yeah. Is no, I mean, the movies themselves. No, it was they, three. Three years, uh, 2001, 2002, 2003. Was it three years of one? I thought they were a couple of years apart. Nope. Bing, bang, boom. Okay, well, you know, that's the longevity of, I mean, the only thing that's comparable are the James Bond movies. Yeah. I would say. And, you know, they're, they're even older than the Indiana Jones movie. The difference is, you know, they keep changing actors. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, you know, you got Harrison Ford sticking with this from beginning to end, which is sort of unique. Yeah, it Most is. Although we have seen a, a large changing cast of characters in the movies. It seems like, of course, like every movie, he's got like a new sidekick. Um, and now in the last couple of movies, we've, we've seen where he's like, now he has like older sidekicks who supposedly have been with him for years. But of course, we're seeing them for the first time. Right. 
talking about something. His wasn't there talk screen at, life. Wasn't there talk at some point of uh, revamping the franchise with a younger actor playing yeah. Jones? I know this. Would there you guys there. be receptive to that at all, or is that a complete turn off? Yeah, well, maybe that's a, a good place to end on because I do remember there was some chatter six, seven years ago when they were, tr- you know, they hadn't yet launched the idea of a, a fifth movie. I think Chris Pratt was the name that came up. Um, and I think it's point- probably be one of those Chris's. Yeah, I, I would the- probably vote for Pine myself, but yeah. uh, my take on it is I don't want to see another other Indiana Jones movies with another. I mean, they did it with Han Solo, and I was okay with that. Um, but you know, again, that's taking the character back to the beginning here because chronologically, between the movies and the shows, we literally have seen Henry Jones Jr. from at every age from about like sure. ten through seventy. And even older, you know, we had the host, Old Indy, who was the host of the TV show. But I like to joke, that actor is actually now way younger than Harrison Ford is in, in the fifth movie. Uh, you know, so we've literally seen Dr. Jones from boy to very old man. And so trying to kind of like, re, you know, recon, reconfigure it and say like, oh, well, here he is at like 27. I don't I don't want to see that. I mean, no, but, there, there, he's too identified. Harrison Ford is too identified with the with the role, you know. It's like uh, a bad analogy would be uh, when uh, Sean Connery left Bond. You know, uh, the first, you know, the the poor uh, George Lazenby, you know, uh, got uh, pummeled simply because he wasn't uh, Sean Connery, even though On Her Majesty's Secret Service <clears throat> is not a bad Bond movie, but nobody likes him because he took over for Sean Connery. I think yeah. people like it in spite of him. Yeah. 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 I'll just, very quick aside, but just I'll just say, you know, for, as your uh, nuke the fridge moment, Mine was in the opening minutes of that film where, like, I can't remember, it was his girlfriend or his wife dies, and he's, like, sobbing, and I was just like, I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, James Bond is not a bitch. You know, he is not a guy to to weep and cry and, and do that kind of stuff. I mean, we got to see, obviously, some feelsy stuff in Daniel Craig's, you know, denouement of the character, but the right way, I think. So that, that was my take on that. He's but. also a much better actor than Lazenby. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that was Lazen B's first movie, and you know, right. he was a model before yeah. he became a Bond. Uh, kind of turning to the cultural side again as we wrap things up. Um, you know, I think you can also speak to the Indiana Jones having a much more profound impact on our culture, um, apart from the movies compared to some of these other things, just because it was not. It, it was a, a somewhat fantastical set, setting, but still grounded in history. You know, sort of fanciful reinterpretations of history, but some you 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 see things see things even then and now were like fashion. I mean, I remember like like the hats and the, you know, I mean, like literally, you know, leather bo- leather type jackets like that became all the rage in the eighties and nineties. You know, Bull Durham, Bull, you know, w- would not be wearing a leather jacket if it were not for Indiana Jones. Um, you know, of course, the hats and the 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 looks. Uh, and in a lot of other ways, just sort of this adherence to, you know, uh, greatest generation manhood. I think that w- that was something that was sort of, you know, celebrated there that maybe even sort of become a for derision. Um, hey, I had a whip. The uh, one of the I forgot after which movie it was or before the release of one of the movies, they sent out a thing of gifts and uh like a little press kit and there was a whip in one of them i kept that around the newsroom for a few years until i wore it out that's great that's great i love that that's, that is that was probably the best piece of movie swag ever received uh yeah alec well, why don't we throw to you uh to, to wrap things up you know as someone who's you know younger than 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 bob and i and you know kind of like you say as you say more kind of grew up with the movies uh I guess I did too. I guess I was twelve when the first one came out, or twelve or thirteen, depending on when it came out. Yeah, you, you can certainly see its influence, though. Like uh, without Indiana Jones, there wouldn't be those Brendan Fraser mummy movies. 
There wouldn't be National Treasure. There wouldn't be, uh, I mean, Uncharted was a video game and a movie, which is pretty much entirely aping Indiana Jones. It's uh, cultural impact is wide, and uh, a lot of these things have been popular also. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the case, too. That's probably why we've loved these movies so much, uh, at least for me. I mean, even when, you know, I felt like uh, there were times where it didn't live up to its full potential. I mean, even all in all, you know, there's, there's flaws in all the movies, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Dial of Destiny, certainly. But, you know, I never got tired of this character, um, just as Harrison Ford never did. Um, and I think that's why, I, even though some people, I think critics are quibbling about the movie, I think audiences are going to come out for it. Um, Bob, why don't you take us out with, you know, any sort of anecdote or memory or favorite thing from any of the Indiana Jones franchise that you you will cherish? Okay, my favorite thing from an Indiana jo is Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, you know, sorry to sound repetitious, but one of the things I love about old the old movie serials are the stunts and the stuntmen. My favorite stunt is... Uh, by Yakima Kanut, the fa famous stuntman who directed the uh, chariot race in, you know, Ben-Hur, you know, the, the sound one. Uh, one of his greatest stunts, and he did this in a couple of movies, was, you know, he'd go under the horses in the stagecoach, go under and then pull himself up. And when uh, the stuntman, I think it was Terry Leonard, for Harrison Ford did that in Raiders of the Lost Ark. I just I just had this big smile on my face and going, okay, these guys love Republic serials. And <laughs> that to me, I was hooked right then and there. Right. All right, guys. Well, a lot of memories, a lot of things to cherish. And I will cherish you guys for joining me on this podcast and being part of the Film Yap family. Uh, we so much enjoyed doing these three guys and Hopefully you're enjoying listening and watching Tim. So thanks everyone. And uh, we'll see you, Dr. Jones. Bye. Bye.